There's a lot of news feed about solar, whether it be rooftop, utility scale, commercial, industrial. There is a lot of narrative around tariff changes, the savings associated with solar, the link to load shedding and solar. Um, you know, it's in the political conversation, it's in the economic conversation, it's in the energy conversation. So it's very much becoming part and parcel of businesses and households discussions. It's like not if you get solar, it's when you get solar. So the good news is quarter two, which is we've, we've taken the quarters for uh, from a calendar year perspective. So this is April to June. Um, no load shedding. That's a fantastic result. And that's also, it's also a very good, in my view, a very good um, opportunity for the solar industry to differentiate itself away from load shedding. I think often solar and load shedding are seen together. Um, and that's not, that's very unique to South Africa. There were 350 megawatts of rooftop solar added in the quarter. I think this is ESCOM data, so it can't, it, this is what ESCOM reports, the change. Some of it might be a spillover but between periods, we don't know. But at least what ESCOM has on, on file, it's gone up by 350 uh, megawatts. So taking total um, rooftop solar to 5.8 gigs. So that's actually a growth on quarter on quarter. I think last quarter uh, there was about 240 megawatts um, added. So that's quite positive. A lot of people ask, without load shedding, is, solar, is the solar industry going to continue to grow? And I think what the ESCOM data shows is yes, it is growing. 1st of July, we had another power increase. Um, sadly, that means ESCOM has increased its, its electricity prices to its direct customers and to its municipal customers. And then those municipalities have passed on between a 10 and a 13% increase, depending on where you are. The driver of, uh, of ESCOM price increases uh, is the cost, and part of that cost is the huge interest cost and debt. How can we reliably say that solar saves people money? And, and that's just going to be the driving force of the, of the growth in solar that we see in uh, more linked to international markets where people go with solar because of sustainability and financial security. And, and all these increases that we talk about just continue to, to add to that, uh, to that value proposition for the users of solar. ESCOM in public has said that they need to recover more of their fixed costs. The number that you guys would have all seen is 70-30. Um, our view is that's too high. That unfortunately is, is putting too much of a burden on consumers. We've mentioned the 70-30 that ESCOM's asking for. Our view is very firmly that's not in line with international practices. So we hope that there can be proper engagement, public discussion around that. And we think that the ratio of 40-60 fixed cost to, to variable is a lot more sustainable for South Africa and for ESCOM. Um, we think there's got to be some government work to be done, and I think it's very important that we get this tariff um, structure right. Ordinarily, in, in supply-demand economics, when uh, when you know when supply increases, prices go down. When demand decreases, prices uh, go down as well. Um, I think where we've seen a very interesting um, dynamic here is that, as we've indicated, the the cost for ESCOM to produce a kilowatt of power has been going up and up every year. When demand for power, ESCOM power, is going down, it's not having the result of bringing prices down, it's actually bringing prices up because ESCOM has fewer customers and fewer is selling fewer units of, of electricity, um, so it's not been able to recover those, those costs um, efficiently. Long term, we need coal power in South Africa. As I said, so ESCOM is still 85%. We can't just continue, we can't just turn off the coal power stations and, and the, the rest of the industry won't be able to catch up in time. And we've got a huge coal industry, especially in Pumalanga. So that needs, there needs to be a just transition. We do need, uh, in terms of the IRP, we need 100 gigs of power by 2035. And really where that's going to come from is that's got to come from huge investment in renewable energy and other green and clean sources of power. Um, so very much the... The, the future for renewable energy should be seen as very bright. We've got some stats in the paper to show the huge investment that South Africa needs in its transmission infrastructure. That's not just transmission infrastructure, long, high voltage around the country. That's also last mile municipal connection points, which are, which are in desperate need of refurbishment and investment. Unfortunately, we've already seen news feed where some of these great projects are, can't be connected to the grid. It's just not grid capacity, or that grid capacity is tied up in, in, in regulatory approvals. Um, so I think that, that is a risk. So I think there's got to be a huge uh, public-private partnership in place to try and invest in this grid.